fun. Let's uh, got to stop at some point. Thank you for the uh, tautology. Um, let's no, look it up. Um, I'm about to deliver a lesson. What should you be doing? Writing in your spiral. I added a piece of formatting to this. It's listed on that handout I just gave you. Make sure the title is clear. I'm just giving you the title. And date, date it. Today is October 5th, 2012. We're talking about a comma rule with introductory elements. Now when I do this, I want everybody thinking about whether or not they've made this error, and I know that many of you have. So while I'm lecturing this and giving you notes, you should be looking at your writing and looking at those examples. Let's start with uh, an example. Um, Mia, what was one of yours, one of your sentences? Just read it for me, please. Right. Thank you. I know it's Mia's example, but you write it down as well, please. All sentences at their foundation contain two parts. Um, Heather, do you remember what those two parts are? Every sentence has two parts. A noun and a verb, excellent. Subject and predicate, noun and verb. There we go. Daniel, can you tell me the simple noun and verb or simple subject and predicate in this sentence? Yep. That's your noun. What's, what's your verb? Yep. That's the sentence. I went. When additional kind of extra material comes in front of that, it's called an introductory element. I say element because it could be a word or words plural. So Mia, what's the comma rule with introductory elements? What do you have to do? You have an introductory element, so what do you do? What weren't you doing in your journal that I told you you need to do? No, in your journal writing, I made a mark. You have to insert the comma after the introductory element. Let's verbally hear some more examples. Um, who else has an example of an introductory element comma issue? Jessica, I know you had some. Um, who else has, Rissy, you have one? Can you read the sentence for me, please? Good enough. Last weekend, comma, I had a group of my friends sleep over. I is the subject, had is her verb. Last weekend is the introductory element. Last weekend, comma. Jessica, what's one of yours? And who else? I'd like to hear from others. Who else has this error? Look in your journal writing. Yeah. 
So I remember your journals, the actual journals that I graded. There you go. Jordan, you have one? Yes. Read that sentence, Jordan. Eventually, I would buy a worm and name him Phil. Eventually, I would buy a worm and name him Phil. I love this sentence. This is my favorite sentence all day. Introductory element, followed by a comma. Single word. We had last weekend. We had last year. We had eventually. Jessica, did you find one yet? Yeah. What you got? Every spring break, comma, my family goes, and so on and so forth. Those introductory elements must be followed by a comma. That's the rule. And think about how you say that. Jordan, could you repeat your fill sentence? How would you speak it? Speak it again. Eventually, I would buy a worm and make him fill. You rushed through it a little bit fast, but here's how I would speak it. Eventually, I would buy a worm and name him Phil. There's always a little pause. Eventually, I would buy a worm and name him Phil. Every spring break, my family and I, there's a noticeable but short pause. That's where your comma is. Anybody else have examples? You're all staring at me or into the walls. Look at your journal entries. Mia, you got another one? Okay. You got a few. Yes. Read it loudly, please. Everybody listen. By the time I went shopping, I would have $200 left. By the time I went shopping, I would have $200 left. This is an excellent example because it shows how long these introductory elements can be. This is by the time I went shopping. I would have $200 left. Daniel did such a good job last time. What is the noun, verb, subject, predicate, pair in the sentence? I would have. It's the entire thing. All right. Keep up that work. I will check the binders at a time in the future. You should be keeping up with notes and revision exercises.